Hello students, this video is based on lesson number 6, Ocean Floor for Standard 11th Geography Subject for Science and Art students. So let us understand what is the structure of ocean floor, what are the different different landforms which we can see inside the ocean floor. So there are total 5 to 6 landforms like continental shelf, continental slope, abyssal plains, oceanic trenches as well as the oceanic ridges okay so these are the landforms which we are going to study in this video so the structure of ocean floor has become very important nowadays to study it why because we should know what are the things present in the ocean floor and what are the useful things which can be used for the benefit of human so it is not always that we are studying the ocean floor just to exploit it okay we are studying the ocean floor that if in case we get some uh, benefited things so because of that various scientists are studying on the structure of ocean floor now when do we understood when did we understand that uh, the ocean floor has different different landforms so in 1876 the british ship which was named as challenger so this ship sailed whole around the world so during when it was sailing then it came across all these different different landforms and then it was understood that ocean is or the ocean consists of different different landforms so this is the figure of ocean floor so here you can see the first is your continental shelf immediately after the coastal line comes your continental shelf then you can see a slanting line that is your continental slope as it is slant as it is steep slope because of that it is called as continental slope after that is your abyssal plain so abyssal plains extent is from 4000 to 6000 meters and you can see that it is totally a flat surface area now within the abyssal plain down again there is a deep trench a deepest trench you can see that is called as oceanic trench and after that you can see a volcanic island so whenever a mountain which is present on the ocean floor so this mountain when it comes out of the water level then it comes then it is called as island and after that you can see some of the ridges so the ridges are the mountains okay so let us come across the first part is your continental shelf so starting from the land a trip across ocean basin among the sea floor would begin with crossing the ocean or begin with the crossing the continental shelf means whenever you uh, visit to the beaches or the coastal lines you see that after some uh, specific uh, distance then the water starts okay then we go inside and still we can walk so that part or the, the continent the continental part which is submerged under the water is called as your continental shelf so it occupies near about 7.6 percent of the oceanic area so if your oceanic area uh, it consists of pacific ocean or atlantic ocean or mid-atlantic ocean so amongst all this uh, oceans 7.6 percent of the area is covered by your continental shelf the depth of the sea level in the continental shelf is about 180 to 200 meters depth only so the depth is very less okay the continental shelf has shallow water and less than few hundred deep that surrounds the land okay so the hundred feet depth is there and the sea level depth is how much 180 to 200 meters it is very narrow or nearly non-existent to some places in other it extends for 100 of miles so it is not consistent everywhere in some places you find it narrow in some places you find it broad in some places it is very deep in some places it is not much deep okay so this is how it is unevenly distributed the water along the continental shelf is used usually for productive from light and nutrients the portion of the continents that is submerged under the water and the borders the coastal areas is known as the continental shelf the continental shelf is of great importance to man so why it is of great importance to man that we are going to study in the next slide 
now as these uh, this is very close to the coastal area and the water is very shallow okay it is very broad so what happens the large amount of sunlight reaches to this particular area and because of sunlight and water the photosynthesis activity takes place and this continental shelf is very rich in plankton now what is plankton these millions of they are microscopic organisms which are found under the sea water and are an important food for fish so plankton is a food of fish which is found in continental shelf the shelf has ca has some of the richest fishing grounds in the world such as grand banks and george's bank in north america in fact the fish caught in the continental shelf form the backbone of fisheries industry in the world so you can say that most of the fishing occupations are totally dependent on the fishing which is done on the continental shelf as this continental shelf allows the sunlight to reach to the part of the ocean bed so because of that the planktons they grow in the tremendous amount and as plankton is a food of fish lot of fish as uh, fishes are attracted to this continental shelf the continental shelf contains the world's largest reservoirs of natural oil and gas minerals are also found here the concentrated minerals are in the large quantities and which can be mineable so which type of minerals are found like a, like diamond chloramide ilmenite magnetite platinum gold phosphorite deposits even the sand gravels and industrial silica are also found here which are the hard minerals and they are they are always extracted from the offshore zone so this is why the continental shelf is very much important to a human now after the continental shelf immediately there is a deep slope and then comes your continental slope so after the extent of continental shelf there is a drop down in the ocean floor and there is a slope of gradient about 2 degree to 5 degree and this slope is called as continental slope now what is the depth of the continental slope the depth is almost about 200 meter to 4000 meters so because of its steepness the continental slope stretches over a limited area the deposition of sediments is also limited in this part as it is very slopy you cannot see any type of deposition here okay whatever comes on continental slope is drained down immediately due to the slope it comes down the continental slopes are generally considered as the boundaries of continent so once the continental slope starts or it is there means you can understand that the continent has finished it is the boundary level of that continent it covers about 8.5% of the total ocean area so this much that is the 8.5% of the area is covered by your continental slope now what are the things which are found here are methane hydrate and the compounds of water and methane is present in the continental slopes now once we are finished with the continental slope then we uh, then we come across a plain surface that is your abyssal plains so beyond your continental slope lies your abyssal plains and they stretch over a great distance so over these plains there are features such as sea mounts mountains and plateaus so what can you see on this surface you can see there are some mountains there are some islands there are some sea mounts and plateaus so they have a gentle slope and covered by 66% of the ocean floor so abyssal plain covers the maximum area of your ocean floor that is total 66% of the ocean floor the relief on the plain is produced by volcanic and tectonic activities so all the things which you can see on the abyssal plains are affected by the volcanic plates and tectonic activities which we have already studied in lesson number 1 so other compounds of the abyssal plain sediments include wind blowing dust volcanic ash and some of the chemicals so whenever there is a large amount of volcanic eruption in the water in the ocean so large amount of material comes out and the, those are the components which are found here so basically abyssal plains are flat lying expanse of horizontal deposited sediments that accumulate on the ocean floor at the base of the continental rise so you can see that 
basically all the material which is coming down from the ocean uh, continental shelf or continental slope is deposited on the or abyssal plains so the abyssal plain nodules of manganese containing varying 70% of iron nickel and cobalt so you can see that 70% of iron nickel and cobalt can be extracted from your abyssal plains the peas of potato size nodules are formed by the precipitation of minerals from the sea water onto the bones of rock fragments certainly the deposits of manganese nodules are not being mined from the ocean floor but it is possible that they could be collected and used in future so currently manganese deposits are found in large amount in the abyssal plains but it is very difficult task to mine from here but in future definitely it will be mined next is your oceanic trench so after the abyssal plains you can see there is a deep narrow steep slope and that steep slope which is from the abyssal plain is called as your oceanic trenches so the shallow ones are the deep ones whereas the deeper ones are called as oceanic trenches so the uh, the slopes which are small they are called as deeps and the slopes which are very deep or the deeper ones are called as the trenches the oceanic trenches are the deepest part of the ocean these trenches are can be thousands of meters deep and they generally occur along the plate boundaries and are associated with active volcano and strong earthquake so basically you can see that the earthquake or the volcanoes which occur in the ocean floors are occurring nearby in the oceanic trench areas the marina trench in the pacific ocean is around 11 kilometers deep while the java trench in the indian ocean is around 7.7 kilometers deep so the knowledge of the oceanic trenches is limited because of their depth and their remoteness so till now we cannot go there there is no accessibility to go there and because of that we haven't studied much about the oceanic trench because going near the oceanic trench is very a uh, very difficult task hence it is also called as a, a remote area okay next is your oceanic ridge and the plateaus so the submerged mountain of the ocean floors are called as oceanic ridge so there are so many mountains in the figure you can see that there is one small mountain which is totally submerged under the water you cannot see it from outside so such mountains are called as oceanic ridges so they are 100 to 100 of kilometers wide and they extend for thousands of kilometers so some of the oceanic ridges are very flat and they have extensive tops so these are called as plateaus so if your oceanic ridge is flat then it is also called as plateau so there is an example of chagos plateau in indian ocean so at the places the peak of the ocean reaches appear above the ocean surface then it is called as oceanic island so in this figure you can see that one mountain uh, mountain is very tall and its peak is is going beyond the water level so that mountain is later on uh, called as island as it can be appeared above the sea level so they are classified there are different types continental islands like magadskar island southwestern indian ocean volcanic island is hawaii island pacific ocean and coral islands are aladabar islands and indian ocean so basically this is how the islands are divided so the continental islands <coughs> these are the uh, islands which is close to the continents the volcanic islands are the islands which are created because of volcanic eruption and coral islands are created because of some uh, deposits okay the deposited material which comes from here and there so because of large amount of depositions also the islands are created hence these are called as the coral islands so this is all about the ocean floor which we uh, we have studied in this video so they are typically we have covered all the ocean floor landforms like continental shelf continental slope abyssal plains and mid oceanic ridges as well as the oceanic trenches so in the next video we'll be studying about some oceanic resources as well as the other resources and its uses of the ocean we'll be studying in the next video so thank you for watching do subscribe the channel